Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to Love Your Work Life, episode 103. It is Leadership Month inside Control Your Career, and leadership is a topic that I absolutely love. And you may have listened to an earlier podcast episode where I talked about, yes, you are a leader, because I believe everybody has leadership traits and characteristics. So this week, I'm going to go deeper into five principles that I believe you can focus on to strengthen your leadership performance. Now, the problem is great leadership isn't always modeled for us. I think we can all think of times when we worked for a manager or a leader and we just didn't feel supported. We didn't feel like we were trusted. There are leaders who micromanage and create toxic work environments by showing favorites or even extreme things like bullying. So when your only experience of leadership is leadership that wasn't good, then sometimes it can be hard, especially earlier in your career, it can be hard to create great leadership traits within yourself or develop the leadership traits that you naturally have so that you can be employing those, applying those in your role and help your team become successful. So that's why I want to talk about these five leadership principles. These get to the heart of leadership so that you can focus on them, develop them, elevate in any area that you feel is lacking, and become the leader that you know you want to be. And I bet you that when you start focusing on strengthening your own leadership skills, you will also start to remember some of the quiet leaders in your life that made a big difference. And they don't even necessarily have to be managers. You may have worked alongside someone who just showed up as a leader and you start to recall and remember them. Well, now you can make them one of your leader role models as you start to dive into these five principles and develop, develop, develop. The good news is, is that you have time to become a great leader. You don't have to become a great leader overnight. You can invest in yourself and you can tweak and fine tune all along the way and become better and better and better. Because here's also what I know, is there are things that are going to happen day in and day out that will be challenges to your leadership. You might have a new person join your team who has a very different personality or background or represents uh, differences in some way that are going to challenge your leadership, that are going to cause you to grow in your leadership skills and style. There are going to be projects and plans and strategies going on in your company that will challenge your leadership level today and create an opportunity for you to elevate. And when you go back to these five principles, you'll figure out, ooh, okay, this is the one that I need to develop. This is the one I need to spend some time on. So let's dive in to those five principles. The core leadership principles that I'm teaching inside Control Your Career that I want to talk to you about today are competence, communication, character, clarity, and care. Let's jump right into competence. Well, competence isn't just knowledge. 
you could have a lot of knowledge about what you do about your department, but it doesn't mean that you have competence as a leader. Competence as a leader is how you share what you know. It's your follow through. It's putting it all together, everything you know, and the ways you show up with such a strong sense of purpose that people can't help but follow you. Competence could mean that you are delegating, that you're giving other people the opportunity to shine and share their knowledge. Think about that. Competence as a leader doesn't mean you're holding on tight to everything. It means you see everything. It means you are observing the competence in others and giving them the opportunity to contribute at a higher level. Competence as a leader is awareness. And it's awareness of the skills, abilities, and qualities that you bring to the table, but that everybody else around you brings to the table as well. Communication. Well, I am a big believer that it's better to over-communicate than under-communicate. Here's the reason why. When your team knows what you're thinking, they can anticipate. They can be proactive. They are set up for success because they have a window into how your brain works and therefore can be responsive. I've had people working for me over the years that because we had such great communication between us, I felt like they could read my mind. Have you ever worked with someone like that? I can think of a very specific situation as a um, director of marketing where one of my graphic designers would come in and we would start brainstorming together. We'd start collaborating together. She just got me. She could read my mind and she started finishing my sentences. How do you think she could do that? Well, I've got to believe, first of all, yeah, we had a great relationship, 100%. There was trust and respect there. But it's because I had been an open communicator and an active listener that I created the opportunity for us to have that high level of understanding between each other. Active listening and just being a good listener in general is such a huge component of communication as a leader. It shows you understand. It shows you care. When you are repeating back to people the things they say, the words they use, and you are reflecting their style in your approach, you are creating safety, my friend. And that's a big deal in workplaces today. That sense of psychological safety where people can feel like they can be themselves. And which is the perfect segue into the next one, which is character. When you behave with integrity, you inspire confidence even in the midst of chaos. And character is about you being authentic and about you giving the people around you permission to be authentic. This makes you someone your team can count on. And when your team can count on you, when they know they can be themselves and they know that they are in a safe place that values them for who they are, when that happens, they want to show up for you in the best possible ways. Do not underestimate the power, your authenticity and your character and you sticking to your values and acting in a way that's in alignment with your values, your personal values. Do not underestimate the power that has. You are leading by example when you're being authentic, when you're being transparent, when you are sitting down with your team and sometimes sharing 
vulnerabilities and the frustrations you have with the way things are going, not in a judgy way, but in a way that shows, hey, we are in this together. Man, that is what character as a leader is all about. Next, it's clarity. And when I think about clarity, I always think of one of my favorite leadership authors, John C. Maxwell, and this quote, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. When you're clear about your vision for your business, when you're clear about your vision for your team, when you're clear about your vision for yourself, lots of things fall into place. And this doesn't mean that you have all the answers. That's not what clarity is about. Clarity may mean that you know the way, go the way, and show the way in this moment. It means you're open to receiving information to help figure things out, to help clarify. Having clarity is also about owning it. This is such a powerful way to engage your team and be the kind of leader that people want to follow. Setting the vision out there, creating a mission, and creating a sense of purpose, creating a a common purpose that everybody can rally around. That's what clarity does. And listen, when you have to change your mind about the vision or the purpose, that's okay too. Just go back to communication and share what's happening and share why things are changing. I think you can start to see now how all of these five principles are so interrelated and interdependent on each other. Each one sharpens another. And as you continue to develop these principles within yourself, then the other ones are going to grow too. It's so cool. That's why I love them so much. Now, the last one is care. And care is about leading with kindness. It's about servant leadership or leading, as I think I heard one person put it, leading with empathy and elegance. What's awesome about elegance is it's simple, it's straightforward, it's elevated. This is a way that you can lead with care. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be super simple, like walking around on a Monday morning or calling people individually or doing a Zoom meeting one-on-ones and just saying, hey, how was your weekend? How are you doing today? Anything keeping you up at night right now? Having true care and concern for the growth and well-being of your people and your teams leads to sustainable, duplicatable workplace success. Because one thing leads to another. You create traction, you create motivation. It all works, my friends. So in closing, and to kind of take this to another level, I want you to ask yourself five questions. How would you measure competence for yourself and for your team? What would you look for? When does communication matter most? Sometimes I think we as leaders want to communicate Uh, during hot topic kinds of items, but think about flipping the script a little bit on that. What's another time when communication could really matter? What's your definition of character? What does it look like for you to show up as someone with character, with authenticity? Why does clarity matter in the workplace? Can you think of a time when you lacked clarity and the result of that versus a time when things were perfectly crystal clear? What was the result of that crystal clear clarity? And then what words do you think describe care and why? Take it a step further. How could you elevate your care? Is that a handwritten thank you note? Is that bringing donuts in one morning? Gosh, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be complicated. Showing you care can make a huge difference. When you start to elevate your 
leadership performance. When you look at it as something to strengthen day by day, moment by moment, situation by situation, you will suddenly look back and find that you have a team that'll walk through walls for you. You have the ability to understand what's going on around you and not stress out about it. That, my friends, is what being a great leader day to day, week to week, month to month is all about. And you've got it in you. I know that. All right. I'll talk to you again soon. Here's the thing. You are going to work 90,000 hours in your lifetime. That's 30% of your life. And for some of you, it's probably even more than that. So you might as well take control of it. Learn the skills you need to learn. Get the professional development resources you need to excel and deliver and have impact. That's what my membership, Control Your Career, is all about. Join for $20 a month or $197 a year. If you want VIP treatment, you can get access to that too. The bottom line is I want you to have all the resources you need to create a thriving career anytime you want. And when you hit some blocks, then I'm going to give you some things on how to survive too. Week after week, month after month, inside Control Your Career. Go to elisashuck-careercoach.com forward slash control-your-career. I will see you there.